Hello everybody and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be actually getting started on our kind of belong app and building the first feature or the first kind of widget that we're going to have there. Now we want this to actually be a text input box. So if you think about this blog app that I've been talking about a little bit, of course, what we're going to need to do is actually give the user some area where they can type, right? And then when they press enter or they press post or send or whatever it is, then they can see their thing and it will, you know, appear, but we need to give them a way to actually type first. So that's what we're going to be focusing on here. And that's going to, going to involve the use of something called a stateful widget. So we're going to learn about stateful widgets. Then we're actually going to get into the text box itself and a whole bunch of other stuff uh, within Flutter. So with that being said, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is delete this test widget right here. I'm not going to use that anymore. I'm actually going to go ahead and scrap all this stuff in the body and just leave it um, blank for right now. We'll add something there after. Because the first thing I want to do is actually make this stateful widget, which is going to hold that text input box or that text field or whatever you want to call it. So to make a stateful widget, we can code it out like we did with all of these just from scratch, or we can actually use a shortcut from VS Code. So if you're not using VS Code, then whatever pops up here, you're just going to have to type in manually. But if you are using VS Code, then type STFUL like that. Once it gets to the L, press enter and you should see a template that pops up. So again, STFUL, stateful is kind of the short form there. And then all of a sudden, when you press enter, you should see your cursor is blinking uh, right where the name of the class should go. So here, what we can do is just name our class or name our stateful widget. In this case, I'm going to name it text input widget like that. And there we go. So now we have text input widget and we've created a stateful widget. So this looks a little weird. This is a strange syntax thing. We have two classes for one widget. How does that work? So rather than the stateless widget where we just had one class with the stateful widget, we have two. We have one class that is responsible for handling all of the state and the rendering and another class that is responsible for taking any constructor arguments for actually setting up the override for the state and doing a few other things as well. So you can see this one extends stateful widget and this one extends state of text input widget. So that doesn't have to mean anything to you. That's totally fine. But just notice that we do the build method inside of this underscore text input widget state. The underscore is convention. Um, you're supposed to have an underscore whenever you have a state class, which is what this one is. So we're going to do the build inside of here and then anything else we need to set up, we'll probably do inside of here. Anyways, the way these are linked together is we have this create state method. This method says that an underscore text input widget state will be returned. And what it does is it uses arrow uh, function syntax, which is just an equal sign and then a greater or less than sign, whatever way you decide to read that. And that returns an instance of the text input widget state. Seems kind of confusing. Um, that's to totally fine. We're going to keep going through it. But this is the format for a stateful widget. So you do two classes like that. Now, if you actually want to use the stateful widget like we will be doing, you just simply do text input widget like you would any other widget. So you can see I have that right here. I'm just going to save so it automatically formats for me. And now we will create a text input widget. So we will use this, but we will actually run the build method from here to see what this widget is. So the first thing that I'm going to do inside of here is actually define our text field. So the text field is what we type in. So we're just going to go text field like this. And there's a few different parameters we can pass in here. So the first thing I want to do is pass in decoration. So what we can do is use decoration and then type input decoration. And inside of here, we can decide what colors we want this to be, if we want there to be any icons, if we want there to be some text that shows up behind, all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm actually going to add an icon. So I'm going to add a prefix icon, which just means this icon will go at the beginning, right? So go prefix icon. This is a widget. We can see that because if we hover over top of prefix icon, it shows us right here that this should be a widget. And if we look at input decoration, we can see that all of the different options we have available here for um, for this decoration. So that's just a kind of a quick trick. If you don't know, or you don't want to look something up. You can just hover over uh, whatever class you're looking at or whatever widget you're looking at and have an instant look at all of the parameters, which is really nice. 
So we do that input decoration prefix icon. And now we're going to say icon, which is actually a widget. And inside of icon, we're going to pass an enum, which represents what icon we want to display. So icon itself is an actual widget and it takes a string or it takes an enum of a icons enum. This seems kind of confusing that will display um, that icon or that denotes what icon it should display. So if I type icons, that gives me a list of all of the icons. And you can see when I put the period there, it shows me all of them here and I can scroll through them and have a look at what all of them are in this kind of right hand thing right here, which I assume you guys can see. So I actually want to add one that is like a message one. So I think they have a message run. Oh, perfect. They have message right there. So I'm going to say icons dot message. So if I hover over that, you can see that's what that icon looks like. And now we're going to have an icon that goes before any of the message that we're typing or any of the text that we're typing. And it is simply a message icon. So I think that will look nice. Next, what we're going to do for input decoration is we're going to add a like helper uh, text. So let's just say text here. There should be helper text. I think that's the right one. What are the other ones? Sorry, we're not going to use help helper text. We're going to be use label text. So here we can see what this does. When the input field is empty and unfocused, the label is displayed on top of the input field. OK, so that's exactly what we want. That's what I want. So I'm going to click label text. And then here, what I'm going to do is just simply write out the text that I want to show. So in this case, I want to say type a message colon like that. Uh, and we'll just add I guess we don't need a space. That's fine. So we'll leave that like that. And for right now, that's all we need for our text field. So hopefully if we did this right, if we look at our uh, phone now, you can press the hot refresh button or build it if you haven't yet. Now we have this widget and you can see it says type a message and I can go ahead and say hello world like that. Awesome. Now to unfocus it, you can just press, I believe, the done button like that and notice that it changes colors. So this is what I really like about Flutter. A lot of the style stuff is just kind of pre handled for you. Like right here, this just looks pretty good already. And all I did was add a really basic input decoration that has an icon and some label text. So now that we have that, um, that's working. Now we need some way that we can actually figure out what is inside of this text box, right? So we're not going to get into buttons today, but I'm going to show you how we can clear the text box and how we can actually control what's inside of it. So if we want to control what's inside of this text field, what we need to do is we need to actually make a text controller. Now, this seems a little confusing, uh, but we will <laughs> try our best to figure this one out. So the first thing we need to do is we need to say final controller equals and then I think this is going to be text input controller or text controller. I'm going to have to just type here and try to figure out what it is. All right. So I was close, but I had to go look it up. It's text editing controller. So we're going to say final controller equals text editing controller. This is simply an object that's going to allow us to attach it to this text field. And then we can use controller to actually modify the contents and figure out the contents of what's typed in here. So if you go inside of the text field, there is a field called controller or a parameter called controller. And here, all we're going to do is say controller equals this dot controller like that. So this is just denoting that this controller parameter here is going to be equal to our controller. So now we can use this controller to actually access the values of this field. But how are we actually going to go ahead and do that? Well, we need some way to like actually trigger getting the information from this field, right? Or we need somewhere that we can display it or something like that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go inside of here and I'm going to make now a row or a column actually that has another text field inside of it so that whenever we type in the text field, it will actually show sorry, not text field, it'll just have text, it will show in this text what we've typed. Uh, this might seem, you know, I might not be explaining that very well right now, but it will make sense. Let's go column. And let's put that inside of here. So if we remember for column, we have children as the actual parameter here. And then what we need to do is we need to make a list of the children. So we're going to say widget like that. And we're going to go ahead and add the list and finish the list right there. Now, after some saving that formats it nicely for us, and we can see we have a column with the children of first text field. That's the first child. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add another child, which is simply text. So we're going to say text and inside of here, what we need to do is we need to actually put the text that we want to display. So in this case, I'm going to display controller dot text. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the text 
from this text field and it's going to display that um, inside of this text right here. Now let's actually go ahead and have a look at what this does now. Um, is this look okay? So let's just type hello and what the heck, nothing's showing up. Why isn't that working? We technically should have some text, right? I don't even see the text. So let's just try this first of all. Let's go and let's put hello like that just to see if the text actually is displaying. And it is, so hello is displaying there, but when I'm typing here, it wasn't changing. So why is that happening? Well, the reason that's happening is because of the way that, uh, what do you call it? The way that Flutter actually redraws and re-renders itself. So by just simply putting controller.text here, what's gonna happen is this widget is gonna get drawn. So we're gonna draw the text input widget. And then when, as soon as we end up typing some stuff, um, nothing is actually going to be updated and nothing is changing. The reason nothing is changing other than the text field itself when we're typing is because we're not telling Flutter that we need to refresh this widget. We're not telling it to redraw it. And if we are not changing the state and we're not doing anything to tell Flutter to redraw this widget, it's not going to redraw it. So even though controller.text is changing as the time is going on and as we're adding stuff to this text field, we're never actually redrawing this text because we're not updating the widget. Widget. So what we need to do is figure out a way that we can force Flutter to refresh whenever we type something here. So how can we actually go about doing that? Well, what we can do first of all is I'm going to add a method that we need, which is called dispose. So I'm going to say, I believe it's at override or maybe it's not. I think it's void dispose. And then inside of here, what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that when we dispose of this widget, we dispose of this controller. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say super dot dispose to make sure we call our parents dispose. The reason for that is because what dispose does essentially say, OK, when this widget is done, when we're finished using it, we need to clean it up. We need to get rid of any of the stuff that's kind of sitting there. Uh, we just need to delete it and get rid of it. So it's not just loose sitting there in memory. That is what this dispose method does. It's just cleaning up the object. So this already has an implementation in the parent class state text widget. There's already an implementation that cleans up the state whenever this widget is disposed of. So we need to make sure that we call that first and then we can add what we want to do, which is controller dot dispose. Now, just to make this a little bit more verbose, what we're going to do is add the at override because this is an override from the parent class. So we're going to say at override like that, just like we have for build. And now we can make sure that when this widget is gone, we're disposing of whatever the parent needs to dispose of and our controller. So we have that now. Let's get back to what I was talking about before, which is how can we actually refresh and update this? Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a string text inside of here. Now, what this is going to do is just store the text that I actually want to display inside of my text field. So now rather than having controller.text, what I'm going to say is this dot text. Now note that you don't need this. Um, that's not necessary. Most of the times so you can just write text like that. But I like to add this just so I know that this is coming from the actual, um, uh, what do you call it, properties or whatever it's called of this class, <laughs> uh, attributes, whatever you might call it. So anyways, let's add that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a method on this text field here, which is going to say, OK, when we change this text field, I want to call a function or I want to do something. That's what I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an on changed event to this widget. So essentially what's going to happen is when this text field is changed, whenever we interact with it and do something, we're going to update the text. And the way we're going to update that is by calling a method whenever this is modified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the on change parameter. So like that on change, if we hover over that, you can read what it does uh, and you can see what's going on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write bracket bracket text like that colon, oops, not colon, sorry, uh, equal sign greater than sign. Now what this is doing is this is making an arrow function. So essentially what we're saying is that we're going to make a function that has the parameter text and text is going to be passed from this field right here. So we'll take whatever text is in the field and we're going to pass that to another function. Now what this function is going to do, so I'm going to just make one up here. I'm just going to call this void and we'll call it change text is going to take text like that and it's going to modify this text right here. So it's going to say this dot text equals text like that with a semicolon. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this. So we're going to say that's an arrow function to change text like this, which is going to be 
this dot change text and that's going to take text. So what that means again is we're going to have the parameter text. This is an arrow function, which means this whole thing can be called. So this is going to seem weird, but let me just illustrate this to you down here. Say I have this right here. I say like X equals that. Obviously this isn't valid, but just imagine this is X is equal to all of this. What happens if I call X is we're going to call this function right here. So I would have to pass it something. I would say like X hello, and then text would be equal to hello because I'm calling X with hello. And then that would actually call this dot change text with hello, which is the parameter there. So I hope that kind of makes sense on how the arrow functions work, but this is the parameter and this is the body of the function. So we're saying, okay, text, and this is what we do when this function is called. So when I call X, which is equal to this arrow function and I give it hello, then it's going to pass hello as the parameter and it's going to call this dot change text with hello. So that is the basics on how we're going to do that. So now we're saying change text, this dot text equals text. Now I'm going to show you what happens when we do this, but we're going to have the same problem that we had before. So if I go here and I start typing, this is reloaded. I've refreshed the thing, but it's not working. It's not updating the text. The reason for that is again, because I haven't told Flutter to refresh the display. So to do that, any change I make that's actually changing the state of this object, I need to wrap inside of set state. So I'm going to say set state like this. This is a special method from Flutter. And inside of here, we're going to say this dot text equals text. So whenever you're making a change to the state and you want this to be forced refresh, so you want it to refresh and redraw the widget, you need to wrap set state. So you say set state. You put the brackets like that, and then you put an open curly, close curly, and you put inside of it any of the variables you want to change. So you can do whatever you want inside of here. You can change many different things, but this is going to force this to refresh and to rebuild the widget. So now when this happens, what will happen is we will automatically refresh the text. Then we will redraw the widget with whatever the text is that we're storing inside of this object. So let's go ahead and refresh this here. And let's look at this and let's start typing. And now we can see that the text down here is actually changing as we change whatever's inside of here. So that is a quick way to actually get the value of the text. We can do something like this and we can add an on changed event. Now this all we this isn't necessarily perfect though. The reason for that is because by just having this on changed event, I can't necessarily manipulate what's inside of this text field. Like let's say that when they type a specific thing, I actually want to modify the text field. I want to clear it. So in this case, let's actually write some code that makes it so if they type hello world, it automatically deletes whatever they typed. So to do that, we're going to go inside of change text here. We're just going to add an if statement and we're going to say if in this case text equals 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 and might actually only be one equal sign. I'm going to say hello world like that. So we're going to delete one of these equal signs because I'm used to writing in JavaScript now. But we say if text equals equals hello world. So if the value of text is equal to hello world, then what we're going to do is we're going to actually clear the text field. So to do that, we're going to say controller dot. And I think there's something called clear. So controller dot clear. Perfect. And that's all we need to do. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we change the value of this dot text. So we change the parameter text to be blank. So we'll say text equals blank like that. And now when we change this state, we'll be changing it to uh, empty. So that um, should hopefully work. Let's have a look at how this works and then we'll recap what we've done. So if we go and we type hello world, that's not going to work. The reason it's not working is because we don't have a capital W and H. But when I type H, you can see that as soon as we get to hello world, so exclamation point, it clears the text field and it removes whatever was here in that text as well. So that is how you can manipulate the value of a text field. That's how you can change the state of things in the objects and force a refresh and flutter. So with that, I think I'm going to end the tutorial here. This uh, was a lot of information at once. I don't want to go on too far and really confuse anyone. In the next video, we're going to talk about button presses and then we will make something. So when you press the button, it will take whatever you've typed in and it will display that onto the screen. And then we'll be well on our way with this blog application. And hopefully in a few more videos, we'll have something that's fully functioning and we can hook it up to a database. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next Flutter tutorial.